Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Chris and I'm a Google Cloud Engineer. Today we're going to be building a virtual machine on Google Cloud. First of all, Google Cloud. Google Cloud offers a suite of services and products that help us build applications and infrastructure hosted in the cloud. So today we're going to be leveraging the virtual machine tool to build our own machine. A VM is like a computer based in the cloud that you can access remotely. It is a fundamental building block for building cloud-based applications. So let's get started with us. The first thing you want to do is access the Google console. The easiest way to do this is to go to Google and search Google Console. And then you'll be, once you access that link, you'll be prompted with a login screen like here. If you don't have a Google account set up, it's free to sign up to Gmail, create an account, and then use that to sign into the console. You'll be asked to go through the terms and conditions and provide some card details. However, you will not be charged anything. Now that we've logged into the console, we can see the amount of credits we have available and that will be in our first project. Now you will not have to create a project, the console will do it for you. And you can see that in the drop down at the top left. The name will be my first project, but the ID will be a globally unique identification. The first step to create an RVM is to enable the API. Fortunately, we can do this within the VM step. So if we access the compute engine tab of the console, and just then I got there by using the search bar. However, you can use the burger menu on the left hand side to access compute engine and VM instances. Straight away, we are presented with the API. So we don't have to go looking for how to enable it. Click enable, allow three to five minutes for this service to enable, and then we can start building. While the API is loading, I'll just explain why we need to enable it. By enabling the API for Compute Engine, it gives us the necessary permissions and capabilities to be able to perform the task of creating the virtual machine. This is true for every tool and service on the console that each one has its own API that requires enablement. Great. Now we should be presented with a new screen once that API is enabled, where we have the options to create our first instance. Now for this, we will be using the GUI. However, in a future video, I will be performing this task using the G Cloud commands. And then also following on from that, we'll do it using a infrastructure as code, such as Terraform. So the first thing we're going to do is click Create Instance. We have two options for this. There's an option at the bottom in the main screen, and there's also an option at the top. You want to identify your virtual machine. So in this instance, let's call it Instance 1. We'll go with the default. Updating your region and zone to your local area. And for this demonstration, we only want to boot the VM. We're not going to be doing any heavy compute workloads. So we're just going to go with a cheap VM. There you go. You can see there we've updated it to an M1 F1 micro, which has brought our costs down to about $6 per month to run this VM. Since we're only going to be using it for about half an hour to an hour and then shutting it down again, it's not, going to, it's not going to abuse our credits too heavy. Now, we do have the option to update the operating system, the size of the storage, uh, any additional storage you may want to put on there, and also if it's going to be running a container image. But for this video, we are just going to be leaving everything as default. So we're going to leave it as a default Linux Debian operating system. We're going to leave the default compute service account on there, default access all round. Long and short, don't need to change anything apart from the name and the region. And once you're done with that, 
click create and then we're going to wait about two or three minutes for the VM to create. Congratulations, we have now created our first VM. We can see that the status is now ready by this green tick that is now visible. Up in the top right here, there are no tasks pending. Instance one is ready. Now, there is multiple ways to connect to this VM in which to update it, manage it, um, and make changes to it. In this particular video, we're gonna look at connecting to the VM via SSH using the terminal on the console. To open up the terminal, click the Activate Cloud Shell in the top right. It is going to ask for permissions when we try to connect, so just make sure you accept them. Parallel to where we can see the instance name, we can see a Connect SSH option. If we use the drop-down, we can see there are multiple prompts here. We're going to use the view gcloud command. This is going to give us the commands that we need to connect to the VM using the built-in terminal. And there's our authorization. This will take hopefully less than a minute to connect to the VM. Once connected, we can do an update, uh, pseudo update, and then we're done. There we go. Now we can see we are in Chris Cloud Tech One, which is my username to log into the platform. Um, and then we're on at machine instance one. If I run a host name, it should return with instance one, and I should be able to run an at uh, update. And we're done. As you can see, we have a fully functioning VM running a Linux operating system in the cloud. It's gonna be at minimum costs, and we are able to leverage it for sandboxing, experimentation, or to run any kind of production workloads um, going forwards. All of this done on the cloud in under 20 minutes. Now to finish off so that we don't get hit with any costs or we're not just gonna burn our free credits down for no reason, I'm gonna quickly show you how to destroy the VM. To destroy the VM, all we need to do is highlight the instance and click delete. Now in the best practice production world, you would probably stop this first, so it shuts the machine down and then delete, but for this you know, practice sandboxing, highlighting and deleting is perfectly okay. And we can track this progress of this in our notifications tab in the top right. For expanding on this, the next time you create a virtual machine, try playing with the firewalls. Maybe update the operating system um, and changing the boot drive size. You know, they're all the options that we left as default, play around with them and see what can work. A good one to be would be allowing only your local IP to access the VM and restricting everything else. So in a recap today, we have connected to the Google console. It may have required you to create your first account. We have built a virtual machine running Linux. We have connected to that machine via SSH and we have proved that it is a working virtual machine. I hope this has been helpful for some of you. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Please give me any feedback in the comments below or if there's anything else that you would like me to look at in future videos, I'll be happy to do so. Thank you very much. Wow, 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 wow!